Hello, I'm, I'm Michael Penny, as you know, and uh, well, we've got a very interesting subject to look at today. It's the temptations of Jesus while he was in the wilderness. So I wonder what we're going to learn from that. Next slide, please. So let us remember that as we are gathered, Jesus is here in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Okay. Next slide. So I am left asking a question, and I don't know the answer to it. What is a wilderness and what is a desert? Um, what's the difference between a wilderness and a desert? Well, I don't really know, actually. So you, you might have to talk to your teacher about this or do some research into it. Obviously, the picture on the left is a great desert, Sahara Desert. Or you want to see the film Lawrence of Arabia for pictures of the desert. Uh, what's that one in the middle? There's no sand there. Is it a desert or is it a, a wilderness? And the one on the right, well, that's the Arizona desert. I've been there and it's quite interesting, actually, because although it looks totally dead, when it rains and it doesn't rain very often, perhaps once in four, five, six, seven years, the next day, everyone in that area drives out to the desert because uh, below that desert surface are lots of tiny seeds and as soon as it rains they just shoot up grow very very quickly because the ground is so warm and the desert is covered in flowers and of course very quickly the flowers die and the seeds are formed and the plant dies and the seeds fall back into the earth and they lay dormant for several years so sometimes deserts surprise you next slide please now these are pictures of a desert. I've been to another one. It's in uh, Monument Canyon in, uh, in the war. Gosh, is it Colorado? You can see these deserts. They've got bits of scrub growing there on the left and on the one in the middle. And of course, the one on the right has got the very famous plant that dries in, sorry, that grows in deserts. Do you remember what it's called? Very tall plant. There it is. Yes, you know what it's called, don't you? It's called a cactus. So sometimes deserts do have some life in them. Next slide, please. So what was the wilderness like where Jesus was tempted? Well, it's a bit like the one on the left. Actually, it is like the one on the right. I've been there. I've been to that desert. Yes, there wasn't much there. Well, what I said it's a desert. Well, it's called a wilderness in the Bible. What's the difference between a wilderness and a desert? Oh, I don't know. Oh, dear oh me. Right. Now, this desert is, oh, this wilderness is pretty dry and arid. Next slide, please. And if you go south to it, there's a very famous place on top of a mountain. It's a village built on top of the mountain by the Jews and is called Masada. It's ruined now, of course, but it was built two and a half thousand years ago. But you can see all the area around it is barren. There's nothing green there at all. Dear oh me, it's not, not a very nice place. It's all hot and it's all dry. And look at the picture on the right. You see, that's Masada from below. Now, the Jews thought that Masada was impregnable. But when the Romans wanted to totally conquer them in AD 70, lots of the Jews flew to the top of Masada. And they sat there and the Romans decided they were going to go up there. So they built a road. Well, Romans are very famous for building roads. You can see the sort of road on the right, can't you? It's called the Roman ramp. And they built that up. They put lots and lots of rocks and rubble there. Going up the side of Masada, it took them years to do it, but eventually they finished this Roman ramp and they went up there and they conquered the remaining Jews. But God, that was hard work. We went there and we climbed to the top of Masada by that ramp. Now at the bottom of a ramp is a danger notice. It says, take plenty of water with you. Stop and rest after every 10 minutes. Don't rush. And I thought, I looked at that and I thought, well, that's a bit of an overkill, isn't it? I mean, I've climbed Snowden, which is over 3,000 feet. And that wasn't 3,000 feet up the ramp. I've climbed Ben Nevis in Scotland, total 4,500 feet, I think. And that was nothing. 
And I'd climbed Mount Kahara, Mount Kahara in Tenerife, a second highest mountain, 10, 12,000 feet. So I'm thinking, what's the problem here? But you know, I, I didn't even get a quarter of the way up and I started to pant halfway up. My lips were cracking, my mouth was dry. What was the problem? Next slide, please. So when we climbed Masada, we were soon out of breath and we were dry and exhausted. Why? When we visited the wilderness where Jesus was, we saw no plants, not even scrubs. Why not? When we visited that wilderness, we neither saw nor heard any insects, not a fly or a spider or anything did we see. And when we visited that wilderness, we neither saw nor heard any birds. It was quiet. It was still. And when we visited the wilderness, we neither saw nor heard any animals, no dogs, no cats, no rats, no mice, nothing. Why not? Next slide, please. Why not? Because of that sea there you can see on the left. Now, usually along seas and oceans and lakes around them, you expect lots of greenery, but there's nothing around that. And that's why it's called the Dead Sea. And it's very low. It's one of the lowest points on Earth. Gosh, it must be about a thousand feet below sea level. And it's so salty. That's why it's dead. Nothing can live there. And all the salt goes up into the air as well. And Masada is just to the left of it. And that's why when we were climbing up that Roman ramp, my lungs, well, all the salt just sucked all the moisture outside the outside of your lungs, and that's why you have trouble breathing and your lips crack and your mouth gets dry and your nose gets dry, so you've got to drink plenty of water. It is so salty, you can't drown in it. People just soak in it. You can't sink. And this is one of the things people love to do when they go there, is lie on their backs in the Dead Sea and read a newspaper. Well, wow, I've never done that, but I've seen the Dead Sea and I've put my foot in it, I've had a paddle in it, but there we go. So that's what the wilderness was like. It was not far from the Dead Sea, a bit further north up the Jordan Valley, and it was dry and it was arid. That's where Jesus was tempted. Next slide, please. So the first temptation, and you can see Jesus had been there a long time, and the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Well, yes, that's tempting, isn't it? Dear oh, me, particularly, hasn't he hadn't eaten for a long time? But this was the answer Jesus gave. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So that's what he said. He says, I'm not giving in to that temptation. So what's the lesson for us? Well, I think the lesson for us is we have to recognize that we all have spiritual needs as well as physical needs. And we don't let our physical needs stop us praying and reading the Bible. Those are two things that feed our spiritual needs. So sometimes things get quite difficult for us. But when things get difficult for us, we shouldn't stop praying and we shouldn't stop reading our Bible. Temptation two, please. Next slide. So the devil took Jesus to the holy city, Jerusalem, and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Don't test God. Now, what's the lessons for us? Well, don't let us be tempted by doing something stupid, like bullying someone or stealing something, or maybe when you're a bit older, getting drunk or doing drugs. If we do something stupid, we shouldn't expect God to protect us. And this was something stupid I did. We shouldn't climb mountains when they are covered in ice. I told you earlier, I had climbed Mount Kehara on the island of Tenerife, over 10,000 feet tall. We got three quarters of the way up and on the north side, we came across this great sheet of ice. 
but we didn't want to go back. And we, but we weren't properly equipped. So we started to crawl across the ice. We got about halfway and we were stuck, absolutely stuck. Yes, I did pray. I'm not going to argue about that. I pray, but why should I expect God to do anything to help me? I put myself in a stupid position. Thankfully, there were four other climbers ahead of us and they shouted back to us in German. But I didn't understand German, so I said English. And one of them spoke really good English and they talked us through the ice shelf. And that was good of them, wasn't it? So I did have another prayer to thank God for them. But, you know, we shouldn't do stupid things and expect God to protect us. Number 11, please. And then the third temptation. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. And what did Jesus answer? Away from me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So what's the lesson for us in this? Well, don't idolize people like football players and football stars. And don't idolize pop singers and celebrities. Oh, yes, enjoy the game of football and enjoy the music. But don't idolize the people. They are people just like you and I. They may have special talents. But that doesn't mean we should idolize them. And in actual fact, we're all special. We have talents those pop singers don't have and those football stars don't have. So maybe our talents are not as popular as theirs, but don't idolize them. Enjoy what they do. Slide 12, please. So those are the main lessons we can learn. Or perhaps there's a more important lesson we can learn. What else can we learn from these temptations? Did you notice how many times Jesus says, it is written? That is, when he comes to right and wrong, stick to what the Bible says is right and do it. And don't do what the Bible says is wrong. That is, be just like Jesus. That's what he did. He stuck to what the Bible, the scriptures, the Old Testament said. We should stick to what the Bible says. And then we will do the right and we won't do the wrong. Number 13, please. So remember this Bible verse. Well, it's a bit from the three verses. Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, 7 and 10. Three times Jesus says, it is written. So remember that. It is written. Okay, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you overcame Satan's temptations. I ask you for your strength to stand up against each and every temptation each time I encounter one. Help me to stay awake spiritually so that, so that temptation won't catch me by surprise. Amen. Next slide. So let us finish as we usually do. I'll say the bits in black and you can reply with the bits in red. So let us depart. We go in love. We go in love. We go in joy. We go in joy. We go in peace. We go in peace. Amen. May God bless us all.